series, the way that they had to grind their way and hold their head high when things got tough against the Rangers. They always had Bobrovsky back there, but I, I think, Sean, what impresses me the most is the, the team was able to feel and build an identity of what the Florida Panthers were all about, and they always seemed to be able to get back to it. Even when it got stray for a bit, they got back to it, and tonight, I, I know they defended a lot in the third period, but you're going to get a push. But that was the way the Panthers play. That was an outstanding, almost a perfect Game 7 for them. This has become a hockey hotbed with their success the last couple of years of rapidly growing fan base, and that will continue. Another one of the great moments, one of the great traditions, that's Nick Cousins, who dressed for Game 6, played in most of their games in the regular season, it was a very difficult scratch for Paul Maurice tonight, but he had his uniform on, his skates on, and he came out and carried the Stanley Cup around the ice. Here's Emily with Bob. Sergey, Sergey Robrovsky, you are a Stanley Cup champion. When I say that, what goes through your mind? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm really happy. I, I, again, I want to thank God for this opportunity, for this experience. It's, again, I'm nothing without him. I want to dedicate this win for him. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just blessed. How do you describe your journey to get here? It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but it was worth it. Everything was worth it. Every, every, every day, you know, every minute of the work, it's worth for this little moment, and I want to enjoy it. What were some of the obstacles you had to overcome? It wasn't easy after, like, they got to free free, you know, three losses in a row, but we were thinking that, like, we have to overcome that to become a true champion. We have to overcome the adversity and everything that opponent or enemy throw at us, you know, to become the really true champion. You put on an incredible performance tonight. Take us through your mindset. What's going through your mind when you got in the net tonight? Yeah, just one moment at a time. That's it. It was an unbelievable energy. The, the, the fans give us a fuel. So it was just, it was so quick, you know, the intensity, the emotions. It was tight and it was so much fun. It was so much fun. When you say the fans, what is it like playing hockey in Florida? Yeah, they deserve that cup. So they were amazing. Two years, I mean, they were amazing all my time here. So, and they just like our community, fans community get built bigger and bigger. And we will like that and we appreciate that. And I think they deserve that. Spasiba, congratulations. Spasiba. Fourth oldest goalie to win a Stanley Cup final game seven. At 35 years and 278 days, only Johnny Bauer, Tim Thomas, and Gump Warsley were older. Wayne Gretzky was the one who started the tradition of the group photo with the Stanley Cup in the middle. All I didn't think they could do that. It's on the Gohorn. 1,489 names on the cup. Some of them have been removed. They have to take rings off to make way for the new names. And each player will get a day with the Stanley Cup. The organization can identify 55 people who can have their name on the cup. All players who played in at least half the regular season games or in one Stanley Cup final game are eligible. This is great. In the middle of the pack, up will come the cup. I haven't seen that since the Islander days. And they're going to go for another round. Why not? Dmitry Kulikov. For all these players and managers and player development people and PR staff on the ice, everybody's got a story about what they dreamed about. And for a lot of them, for most of us that played, you can dream about it all you want. You never get to be here. And Verhege has his name on the cup for the second time. Also in 2020, that was in the bubble with Tampa Bay. There weren't fans to celebrate. 
and he was really a role player. There's the guy in Verhage, Ray spent almost six seasons in the minors. And Paul Maurice says he has such appreciation for the player he is now. Bill Zito now in tears. He's been crying for a half an hour. I'm not even kidding. Bill is an emotional guy. And when the cup first came out, he was walking down to where they were going to present it. And he was in tears then. Well, he deserves a lot of credit. Paul Maurice made the point. You know, he was the one who made the courageous decision. Some of the families coming on the ice now. I mean, they won the President's Trophy two years ago. And the easy thing would have been to say, okay, let's try to get a little bit better. He said, no, we're never going to win a Stanley Cup this way. We are completely changing our approach. We're going defense first. He hired Paul Maurice. Many said, why? Paul Maurice had only been in the playoffs nine times in 24 years as a head coach. He kept reaching out to Paul Maurice, who was on a fishing trip. He kept sending him texts. Paul Maurice wasn't sure he knew the number. Finally, he sent him a text, answer your phone. And Paul Maurice answered the call and has led them to this Stanley Cup. But there are a lot of new players this year on this Florida team brought in by Bill Zito. Guys like Evan Rodriguez on his fourth team in five years. Ekman Larson and Kulikov who made up a tremendous third deep pair. So the celebration continues. A moment ago, Kevin Weeks spoke with Chris Knobloch. Thanks so much. I'm joined by Oilers head coach, Chris Knobloch. Coach, you took over this team. You guys did the, what many people thought was the impossible. You're in 31st place. You come all the way back to make the Stanley Cup. What's one redeeming quality about your team that we couldn't know? Well, first of all, we obviously have a lot of good players and um, a good team. And um, we knew that things were going to sort out and start winning on some hockey games. But uh, how resilient they are. You know, so many times they're down and out, um, back against the wall back in November where they were 31st in the, in the league. And, um, you know, a couple times in the playoffs where we're facing elimination games, uh, two against Vancouver, uh, four against... Uh, Florida here and um, you know we just came up a little short uh, to a team that's uh, very deserving. You said that you've been a part of teams and we all have that believe even when you're down you say you believe but you really believe that this team did. What was that quality that led you to have that level of conviction in your group? Well, just um, everything that we went through this season I thought we uh, responded well to adversity. Uh, start of the series you know I thought we didn't deserve to be down 0-3 um, and um, you know the biggest one was just seeing the players how they conducted themselves they weren't down they weren't out uh, they believed so it was um, easy for the coach to say hey we, 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 we've got an opportunity. Coach thanks so much you guys have made the oil and Edmonton a hockey destination once again I know you fell just short but you guys have a lot to be proud of thanks for taking the time to join us. Thanks very much. Leaves back to you. Weeksy, thanks very much. Meanwhile, Connor McDavid, who wins the Conn Smythe Trophy on a losing team, it's the second forward or skater, non-goalie to ever win the award, joining Reggie Leach in 1976. McDavid did not come. Reggie Leach played for the Flyers. Except the Conn Smythe Trophy, and Commissioner Gary Bettman, but he yeah, others were goalies. Uh, yeah. First, who I don't know, but the two down three was John Sebastian Jagger. Eighty-two was Ron Hextall. Sucks. Sucks. Yeah. For a team that came all the way back, you know, and, and what was it tonight? What do you think the difference was that today? You knew it was going to be tight, you know, game seven for the, for the, for the cup. Um, you knew it was going to be a real tight game and it was going to come down to one thing here and there. And, you know, we're uh, an inch away from going ahead 2 1 right before they, they go ahead 2 1. And, you know, it's tough. They do a good job of shutting things down, and we had our looks. Just didn't find it. This group, thank you so much. What do you remember about this group? Um, yeah, it's, you know, um, just the resilience, resilience of the group. Um, yeah, as you said, we went through a lot. Um, you know, ups and downs, and, um, you know, Came that close, you know. Um, yeah. How proud are you of that? Yeah, really proud. You know, proud of uh, the way we fought all year. 
you know, we were behind the eight ball almost immediately, and uh, we we fought an uphill climb for months and months and months, and um, yeah, just sucks. Come back from from three nothing um, to get to this point. I mean, kind of not solace, but do you take a lot of pride in, in being able to make this a series where it looked like you guys were down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it goes back to the character of the group that we showed all year long. You know, um, we showed all year long that we could fight back, um, even in the most dire situations. And you know, obviously tough to be down three and um, tough to tough to stream four in a row against a good team like that. But we were right there, right there. McDavid, uh, you can see he's emotionally and physically spent. He's answered every question since day one, every game. He media want to interview him after every single intermission. He literally played half of the third period. He played three and a half minutes of the last four minutes of the game. Gave it everything he had. And really, Florida only had four shots in the third period. It was all Edmonton. There were great pushes there, but just in the end, not enough for the Oilers. Well, not enough. Uh, you know, when you get down 3 nothing in a series like this against a team like that, you know it's going to take everything you have to claw yourself back into it. Um, he did that. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, losing sucks. There's no. There's just nothing about to go to Game 7 after 82 games, two months of the playoffs and losing Game 7. I mean, <laughs> I can't imagine what they're feeling, but um, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Like I said, he gave it all he had on and off the ice from a leadership perspective, from a brand ambassador for the NHL, from the media. Uh, what, what, what an exemplary player uh, for the NHL to be able to put up on the billboard and yes. say, this, oh. is our, this, is, this, is, this is our marquee player. What, 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 what a job he did. Yep. Unbelievable. The other side of it is the joy in the family, PK, for Matthew Kachuk. You've often said that you believe Keith deserves his spot in the Hockey oh, Hall of Fame. It's uh, already in the U.S. Not, he's not in the Hockey Hall of Fame. But enjoying it, Brady was emotional here, the captain of the Ottawa Senators, and see it's all about a family affair for the Kachucks. Yeah, and you know, uh, what's special about the NHL and the hockey world? And Mess, you can attest to this. It is one big giant family, and uh, probably the closest league that I've seen in terms of family and players and camaraderie. There's Big Walt. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. Awesome to see. And uh, I'm sure for him, you know, a lot of people talk about him not having a Stanley Cup, not being on, in the Hall of Fame that he should be. I'm sure he would trade all that in to, to do this with his son today. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> Evan Rodriguez promised his daughter would sit in that cup. But she's 10 months old. Oh, that's a beautiful picture. It's awesome. Well, this is why we talked at the start of the show, where the players are going to be very emotional going into this game. And this yes. is what's 